Okay, hello and welcome back, G-Man in the Studio Lab. I've been doing a small series of user reviews on DIY Eurorack modules by the Maker Feedback. In the past videos, I covered their Squeeze and CP3- modules. Today I'm looking at the DIY Static. First I'll talk about what it is and audition the raw sounds. Then I'll make some patches. Last I'll offer up a summary of my objective opinions. Static is a noise source with a variety of flavors to choose from. There's actually a lot of interesting things you can do with noise as you'll see in this video. Percussion, sound effects, chiptune, random signal generator for things like sample and hold just to name a few. As you have discovered almost no two synthesizers have noise that sounds the same, for instance, my 101 VCO, and then the Pittsburgh Modular Toolbox. So yeah, um, no two synthesizers sound the same. There are so many different kinds of circuits that can produce noise. Uh, furthermore, many synths employ cost-effective methods to only approximate white and pink noise. The static module was born out of a necessity to not only have a precise noise source that didn't cut corners, but to also present a cornucopia of different kinds of noise sources in one package. So the first one, let's look at MS noise. This is a white noise. Not very loud that. Yeah, and then the pink version. It's just a little darker. Yeah, those are produced uh, by using uh, transistors. So then there's the ZN noise, which uses a Zener diode. Compare that to first one. Here's the pink version. A little darker again. Then there's a special dark one. Okay. It's rumbling. It sounds like a thunder or an earthquake or something like that. Then the random voltage. It's not very useful as a pure audio source. But what that is good for is uh, your sample and hold input or random CV. There is a pot to sweep the various ZN types, so let's check that out. You have to go to the morph output to hear that. Okay, and then there's the uh, TR. And there's a pot to sweep that one as well. Sounds like uh, Atari sounds or something like that, right? You can see on the scope that it's a, actually a pulse wave with con constantly changing width. So now you've heard the raw noise, let's make some patches. Okay, first let's make a, a snare drum. What I'm doing is running things through the CP3 minus mixer. Um, I have two components to this sound. One is the noise component, and then the other is the transient. I'm doing that using my Tonus VCF, it's in self-resonance mode, and I'm using one of my envelopes uh, upon a gate from my Keystep Pro. I'm using one of the envelopes to uh, affect the frequency cutoff. So you've heard this typical sound. Uh, let me open up the envelope first, and you can hear what that sounds like. That's highly annoying right now, but as I shorten the decay, making just a purely transient type sound. Now I'm going to layer in another, uh, I'm going to use a VCA on my noise, controlled by the same trigger, but I have another envelope so that it the sound of the noise lasts longer. So here's what that sounds like when I add that in. So you can increase the decay on this on the noise part. So 
So that's the ZN white noise. I can use MS white noise. And then there is the transistor noise, or TR, I mean. It's for fun. Let's hit that. Sounds better up here, like that. That's, ooh, that's good. Let me open that up so you can see what it sounds like. So that's a snare sound. Okay, let's make the uh, typical wind noise. Uh, the wind mechanics uh, is real simple, but once you get into controlling it with the CV, there's a little bit more to it than you might think. So I've got the uh, static has the uh, ZN white sound going to the input of my XA VCF. And then uh, let's see what that sounds like. Okay. Let's turn up the resonance so we can get that wind whistling just a little bit more. Now we could plug an LFO into this and it would be nice and boring. It would just go... That's what it would do, so that's too boring. Let's use a sample and hold from the toolbox. And now the sample and hold is going to be getting its tri trigger from Batumi. I got it turned down real s slow. And then the output of the sample and hold will go into a slew limiter, which smooths out the uh, changes in the CV. So let's plug that in. Turn that up for you so you can hear it. So that's what wind does. It's it goes blows harder and then <laughs> blows less, but it's random. So we can increase the rate of triggering the sample and hold. Let's go nutter with that. Let's make it fast. And then get rid of the slew limiter. So you can hear what the pure sample and hold is doing. No, that's kind of hard to hear. Even the stepped sound is pretty cool. So my XAVCF, it does track tuning, so we could plug in the keyboard to that. Let's plug that in there. CV2, up all the way. Then we can play the wind with the song. Turn the resonance up even more. Well, that's a lot of fun. Now this next patch I'm going to do, I'm calling Noisy Bass. And it's inspired by a song I heard by Pale Honey called Why Do I Always Feel This Way? And the way it works is there's a basic bass sound. But randomly, noise kind of comes in with a few notes every now and then and goes away and comes back. And so the way I'm doing it, let's go over the bass sound. I'm running my 101 VCO through the XAVCF. It's filters controlled by the envelope and uh, the sounds, the noise and the bass are mixed through the CP3 mixer. Then it goes through the, the uh, VCA. For the noise to come and go whenever it pleases, I'm using sample and hold and the other VCA. 
and I'm giving the VCA some bias, so at least there's a starting point for the noise to be there, to be present, and the sample and hold, because it's bipolar, it will be adding to and then taking away to the amplitude amount for the noise. So you've heard the noise, the uh, bass patch that I made. <laughs> Now let's add the uh, noise aspect. I'm using the pink noise. That to me sounds the closest to what I heard in that song. Anyway, we'll turn that up. And now with each note. Something like that. I don't know how it actually goes, but... Uh, so the noise is kind of randomly changing its amplitude with every trigger of the note. That's noisy bass. Now let's do some typical rolling percussion sounds. I've got a kick drum going. That's coming uh, from my 101 VCF as self-resonance. It's triggered by the uh, ADSR. And then I also have a the noise, the TR output going to my JP6 VCF. This is in bandpass mode. And I've got the sample and hold with each trigger going into that. So then it also has its own VCA as well as the kick drum. So let's hear the kick drum first and then bring in the noise. Got the resonance turned up a bit. Spring Tank Reverb to that. fun. So static, various noise sources here and um, it's been a lot of fun to play with this and it's made me realize that I'm missing messing around with playing with noise in my sound design. It's great for percussion. I see this becoming a permanent fixture in my percussion module rack. I play with percussion sounds, filter them in different ways throwing them through VCAs um, and you know different sound effects. Been a lot of fun. I would like to have seen the uh, spectrum and morph knobs get their own CV input so you could CV control what those are doing. However, I do know that that's feature creep. That's when you start adding a lot of expense and additional circuitry to your module. And, you know, as it is, it's very affordable. So there's really no reason not to grab one of these. Start playing with noise in your sound design. So much fun. I can definitely recommend it. Thank you for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.